Hello and thanks for joining in. This is lesson 5 for the Like and Subscribe project. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to organize our publishing well. Then I'm going to show you how to automate the cursor so that it always animates to the correct location when the graphic changes size. We've already begun to publish some parameters, so first we want to get some section breakers set up. And that's so we can group our published parameters well. Select the project, go to your objects menu, and add a rig. I'm going to call this sections. Now add a pop-up widget. The widget has three snapshots by default. We just need one, so delete two of them. Before I start renaming this, I'll click back to the project and bring up my emoji and symbols palette. Hold Function and E on your keyboard to do that. I'll go back to the widget and click to rename this field. I'll add this blue shape. Then I'll rename the widget as Res, as in Reserve. It's something I want to save in my library and use later. And I'll add this blue shape to the front. Now we need more of these, but we can't duplicate a rig or a widget locally. So Go to your library, to your favorites folder. I have a folder ready to go here. You can create your own if you need. I'm going to drag this into the folder. Then by dragging this favorite back to the rig, we can add more widgets quickly without having to repeat all of those steps. You can also select the rig and use the apply button instead. All right, that's enough for this project. Okay, now select the rig and drag that into the library too. But before you do that, take the time to add your own style. So now you have a single widget to add to a rig at any time, and you have a full rack of widgets too. I'll delete the one I have and just drag a rack back from the library. Okay, let's start naming our sections. We want a drop zone. We'll change that later. Let's have text. We want cursor. Subscribe. Like and bell. Controls, animate, and banner. Let's publish this one. Here it is. Drag it into the right location. Actually, I want to call this one Profile. Now, if I rename it here, the name will update in the inspector, but we already published it, so it won't update there. It still says Drop Zone. But you can freely rename it here and it won't mess with the source. If we unpublish and publish again, It will have the new name. Let's move that into position. I'll rename the local drop zone scale we published as size. Remember, this is the parameter we published for this. And I'll rename this as scale. Pan parameters will adjust the media position within the clip area of our drop zone.
size adjusts the scale of the media within the clip area, and this scale parameter now adjusts the profile graphic. I'll rename this to just position. All right, now we can add some text to this profile graphic. Select the DZ edge group. Just grab your text tool and click near the profile to add some text. I'll use channel name as the default typography. And change it to black. Select the text layer. Use Shift Command N to add a new group and put the text in this group. Reset the text position. Name the group text. OK, now when you're making titles for Final Cut, the best practice is to leave the text at zero in the motion template and then use the group to set the layout position. That's so the motion and Final Cut have the same default position. Let's have a look at that principle in more detail. Let's use this template here as an example. With this text layer, I used the text layer directly to set the default position. These are the default values for X and Y. With this layer here, I've used the group to set the default position. So the reason we do this is that Final Cut also has a text inspector. We want the default state of the text in motion to be the same as the default state of the text in Final Cut Pro. Let's jump into Final Cut and see what I'm talking about. All right, here we are. This is the same template. Unless you choose the right settings in the motion template, the Final Cut Pro editor has access to the text directly on screen. Now an editor is likely to want to move things around. Let's say the editor wants this text offset over here. If they want to undo that, naturally they're going to use the reset parameter functions here. And now you can see the problem. In Final Cut Pro, the default position for a text layer is zero. But what we did is we set a different default position in the template. This is very frustrating for the end user of your template. With this text layer here, if we move that around, it will go back to the same zero, zero position, which means it will reset to the correct default layout position. All right, let's move on. Make sure that your text is aligned to the left. This is so the text field acts away from the profile and will not overlap when more text is added. Now link the text group to the right edge of the profile zone mask source. Use the Y parameter to adjust it down. Then use the link offset to shift it over. Alright, we have an issue here. We don't really have enough space for our default text, so we need to update the profile ring. Select the profile widget. Make sure it is set to the on state. Let's change the value to 1420. Remember, we still have to solve this issue because our graphic can change width. The cursor animation needs to update too. We'll work on that very soon. For now, let's finish the publishing for the text.
In the Format section, make sure the Editable in FCP feature is active. This allows the end user to update the text directly in Final Cut Pro, and they can work on the text in every way possible from there. So when we make our template, we can just publish a few of the essential parameters that an editor is likely to want immediately at hand. Right, so let's add the font. I never publish the alignment, and I'll explain that in a later lesson. We will do the size. And also the face color. Earlier on, we did a section breaker just for the text, but we don't actually need that. If we publish the text field, that can serve as a section breaker itself. This is the publishing order that I prefer. You can arrange it any way you like. OK, let's do a quick function check. So scaling the profile shifts the text over, and the text will follow the profile on the X position. This is the kind of user experience you want to be providing in templates, and this is possible because we used functional groups to build the graphic. OK, it's time to look at some solutions for that cursor animation. So at this point, we have various solutions to this problem. The choice all depends on how we want this to function in Final Cut Pro. Now at the moment we have our main graphic rigged for two width states. If this was as far as we go, then the ramp behavior or rigging the keyframes are both viable solutions. For a graphic like this, it's more direct and takes less time to set up. The choice between behaviors and keyframes in this case, putting keyframes on a rig, is entirely up to you. I won't demonstrate the ramp behavior here because it's widely done. There's plenty of content online about that already. Let's have a look at putting the position keyframes onto the widget, which is just the same steps that we took before with the pop on the subscribe button. Now, we won't actually be using this solution, so no need to follow these steps. But if you do want to follow along, I recommend that here you save a new version of your project so that if anything goes wrong, you can just restart. Putting keyframes on a widget is stable, it will work well in Final Cut Pro, and it opens the door to many other options. But if you're new to it, it can become messy very quickly. You have to remember that once your keyframes are on the widget, you must manage the keyframes from the widget from that point on. If you go back into the keyframe editor and start adjusting the curves, things will become messy very quickly. So this is a step you take when you're 100% sure that the animations you've set in the keyframe editor are what you want. If you want to go back and revise the style of animation by adjusting the curves in the keyframe editor, then you would need to remove everything from the widget before you take that step, and then put them back on. I'll make sure the widget is active. and set markers at each keyframe just to give me a visual reference. Note that you have the keyboard shortcut for this too. Remember that we have keyframes that just hold the position, like these, and these ones. The last keyframes here were not needed, but I'll just leave them there for now. Now I'll move the playhead back to the first keyframe, and then Drag the X position value to the widget. All my playheads in the wrong place, I'll fix that. I won't adjust the animation back to the corner, 
if we're just doing two states, I think it's fine for the cursor just to animate here when the profile is active. From here, I'll click the next frame and adjust the value to move the cursor into the right place. Let's make it a clean 775. The next frame is a holding frame, so I need to set the same values here to keep it in place. Then click to the next keyframe and adjust the value again. I'll set that to 1230. Then at the next keyframe, just set the same value to hold it there too. And from here the cursor animates out. OK, let's check the function. So as you can see, it's all good there. So if you're working with fixed state, and we have two fixed states here for the width, but it could be three or four or five or as many as you need, then rigging the keyframes is quick and practical to do. Sometimes when you do have a lot of states to manage, it is easier to work with the ramp behavior. But that is only if you don't need anything more than an ease in and ease out for the animation. Otherwise, rigging the keyframes is still the better option. So for fixed states, that is one solution you can use. But this graphic will not function well with fixed states. When we consider how the channel name text functions in the template, we know that we need to give the end user full control over the length because the length of the text string is variable in the template. By adjusting the size, or by adding more text, the end user needs more room. OK, before we go further, let's publish the banner parameters. I'll add the section. Come to the base layer and add color and opacity. In geometry, I'll add roundness and I'll turn off preserve scale because we want the roundness to keep form when the X scale is adjusted. We can't use the width for length control because it's busy on the widget. So we will publish the X scale of the banner for this. I'll just rename and organize the parameters that we published. Now we have the X scale here, which will give the end user all the flexibility they need. So that means our first solution for the cursor is not going to work for this template anymore. What we need is for the cursor to update according to any value the end user wants for the width of the graphic. I'll take the playhead back to the first keyframe, turn off the widget, and remove the X parameter. Now I can show you the real solution to this problem we have. All right, I'm here just in a regular motion project and I have these shape layers all representing, uh, all representing the elements of like and subscribe. So uh, we've got the cursor, subscribe over here on the left, and like and bell on the other side. All right, uh, let's put... Uh, like, let's move like closer together to Bell, around about there. All right, so here's our cursor, and here's what we're going to do. I am going to take the cursor, I'm going to give this a link, that's the position, 
call this A. I'm going to put in the subscribe as the source. There we go. Position to position, right. Now I'm going to duplicate this link, drop it under, I'm going to call this B, and I am going to drag in the like for the source. Okay. See, it holds its place, it's not moving, nothing's happened yet. Okay, let's duplicate that one more time, and I'm going to call this one C, and I'm going to drag in Bell as the source there. Okay, so we've got A, B, and C. Now, watch what happens. Uh, usually, whatever layer is first is going to dominate whatever is below it. So if I turn off A, it's going to jump to B. If I turn off B, it's going to jump to C. If I turn A back on, it's going to jump back to A. Okay, let's turn them all back on again. So if we want to uh, animate the stay on and off in motion, we're going to do it here in the mix. So let's come back here. To the start of the project. A off, we'll send it to B. And then B off, we'll send it to C. Okay. So let's animate that. Nothing fancy, I'm just going to animate from, let's see, let's go over two seconds. Animate that there. Uh, Two seconds, let it hold for a second. And then I'm going to grab B over the next two seconds. Okay, so what have we got now? Let's click on cursor and you can see what's happening here. We've got animate, hold, animate. Okay, so that's part one. Now, uh, for the banner, now this shape layer here represents our banner. I am going to take subscribe. I'm going to reset its position. I'm going to link subscribe position to the banner to the edge left. I am going to take bell, actually, I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm going to take bell, I'm going to reset its position, I'm going to add a link for banner, edges, right, and like. Let's do the same for like, link, banner, edge, right, but we're going to use this offset. Now, we can go further from here because this, what I'm doing here with the offset is not always the best way to go. Uh, in another lesson, we'll look at making this even better, but this is going to work just fine for our graphic that we're doing now. Okay, cool, so let's come back, run our animation. All right, so now, if we take this banner, and we adjust things, we are good to go. And this is what we're going to be doing in our like and subscribe project. So let's get back to that. First of all, we need to set up those null objects in our project. Select the banner group, then use the shape tool to add a layer. Give it a color and name it A.
preset the position and link it to the left edge of the base layer. Use the offset to dial it in. Duplicate that. In the new link, set the edge to the right. Reset the offset and change the color. Now adjust the offset to dial it into place over the bell. OK, if this is at the bell, it should be named Null C. Rename it and duplicate. Name this one B. Change the color. and use the offset to move it into place over the light. OK, a quick function check confirms that the nulls are working correctly. Now we are ready to go. And I'm going to come to uh, the group here. Uh, this is our positional group. Okay, so remember we've got from here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here, 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 here. Okay, so I am going to come back to this frame and going to take exposition and reset that. Okay, so now we just have the scale and the Y position. I am going to add link. A, I want this uh, fixed at the same value we had before, 58%. So that's after the marker, right? Okay. So uh, let's turn that on. And I'm going to drag in null A as the source. But this time we're going to do it to the edge. Not the position, we're going to do it to the edge because this group has a scale function on it. And so the anchor points position wise, it will be at the right position, but because of the scaling down, it will always look like it's out of place, right? Because the group scaled down. Okay, so from here in the opening, we want A off. We don't want A active as it animates and it needs to animate in at the center. Okay, now from here to here, we are going to animate A on, and we are just going to use the Ease Both preset. Okay, cool. Let's duplicate, let's add another link. We're going to call this one now. B, drop it under, uh, set that to fixed at uh, 58, and we're going to drag in, uh, we're going to drag in B for the source, but now, because A is off when it comes in, uh, B would have control, A is off from here to there, we're going to trim B to start right here, okay. Turn that on, drag in null B, and we will set attributes to the edge again. We'll go left. All right. Let's come back to A. And take the A offset. Get that into place around about here. Come to... Between here and here now, we are going to take A, that's the hold, from here to here 
is the animation. So here to here is the animation. So we're going to turn A off. So it's passing it over to B now. We're just going to put the E's both on that. Okay. And for B, we are going to just pull that in a bit. Okay, cool. Now, C. We are going to do add another link here. C. Drop it under. Uh, set that to fixed. C. We're going to trim to here. Turn it on uh, and drag in null C as the source. And we'll set that again to edges left. Okay, so from here to here, that's the holding frame. So from here to here, we want to turn B off. Grab C and move that offset. And let's do these both again. Okay, so here's our state with the profile on. Let's check now with profile off. And let's check with the base. And also with profile off, profile on. Okay. Let's turn off profile, set the banner length back to there. We're going to turn off our nulls. All right, we are done for lesson five. So in lesson six, we will be looking at a solution for the colors. So remember, as we animated our graphic, we used keyframes for the color state changes. And in lesson six, we'll see why this is not a good idea. And I'll show you solutions for that. OK, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this through. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.